Oh, there we go. Hero Israel, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Amen. Amen. For the audience that is online, uh, it's been brought up and I've been terrible about it, but we're at 519 West Main Street, Spartanburg, South Carolina, and anybody that would like to come join us live, that would just be fantastic. We still have a few seats open. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we're going to John for the first scripture, but just the way the uh, songs had moved with uh, Brother Jackie and Sister Lynn, it just brought a scripture to my mind. And we're, we're not worshiping statues. We're not Roman Catholic with the rosary. And we're, we're not out there worshiping things made out of stone and things made out of wood. All those gods were dead. They were never anything but dead. Amen. And they're still just dead stone. Amen. But book of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, and the 6th verse, Jeremiah says something very near and dear to my heart. He says, For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. There is no God like our God. Amen. There's nobody. He, he, he's not a stone. He, matter of fact, he goes to the other extreme. He says, don't make an image to me. Yes. And he's talking about to him. You, you know how they set up the idols. And, oh, Jehovah. What, what, what was that on Veggie Tales? Almighty Shamrock, you are weighty and powerful. <laughs> we, we don't need to pray to an object right. because we have a God that can't be seen with the eyes. We can see the manifestation yeah. with our eyes. Yeah, true. And there's a difference. Yeah. Let's go to John, the first chapter. I'm going to pick up in the first verse when I get there. Now, as I said, this is the, the first time I've tried this, but you guys can all see where we're going, so maybe I don't even have to delve out scriptures to anybody. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Somebody go get me Genesis, the first chapter. Give me verses 1 through 4. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Okay, without form and void. So, I mean, in the beginning, God had created it, but it had not yet become what it was meant to be. Go ahead. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters... And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Amen. So when, when God sees this and God creates this, He doesn't immediately speak life to it. He immediately speaks light to it. You ever try to work on something you can't see? God doesn't have that problem, but this is my illustration. You ever try to work on something you can't see? He's a mechanic. I know he works on stuff that he can't see all the time. God speaks light before he speaks life. Okay, John 1 and 5. And the light shineth in darkness, 
and the darkness comprehended it not. There's a lot of uh, contention over that scripture. Some translations will say the darkness hasn't overcome it. My experience is the darkness can't comprehend it. The Apostle Paul tells us in the book of Romans in the 8th chapter that the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of God. That the carnal mind is still in the darkness where light was never spoken. But it, it, it's hanging out there and it can't fathom. It can't understand the things of God, not because they are more evil than the next person to them, but because the light has never been turned on in their minds. They've never seen, they've never understand. But the light shineth in darkness, in the darkness comprehended it not. Uh, Josiah, get me Proverbs. Oh, okay. You know what? You guys had this all worked out. I'm just going to call them out. <laughs> Proverbs 6 and 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Commandment is a lamp, and the law is the light. Do you guys know? I, I know he probably knows, but do you guys know what the actual word for law is there? Mitzvah. The, the command. The commandment. That is the light. You can't understand who God is or what God wants out of you or where you're even going when you're walking in darkness. There, there's many people, I, I mean, they, they just don't understand. And I, Well, you know what? I, I've, I've had relatives that have tried to defend Buddha, and I've had relatives that have tried to defend Muhammad, and I've had relatives with all these different beliefs. But every one of those prophets, so-called, are still in darkness. They've never come into the light. They've never understood. But there is a difference with trying to do it your way and doing it God's way. Because God's way will start with this. We're Pentecostal. So we've got a lot of the, the feely thing going on. You know, we love to jump and we love to shout and we love to sing. And that's all great. But you know what? Faith is not always a jump and a shout. Your walk with God is not always a jump and a shout. Sometimes it's opening this word and just obeying. When the light is open before your feet and you take that step, you might not feel great about it to begin with. I'm in South Carolina. I still don't want to be in South Carolina. I never wanted to be in South Carolina. This is where God wanted me to be. This is where God put me. So I didn't get warm fuzzies when I came down here, but I was obedient, walking in his light. Amen. Didn't have a whole lot of light at that time. But... I took that step and he shined a little more light. Yes, that's true. And then we got that left foot of fellowship and we got out on our own and God started opening a little more light and opening a little more light. He didn't shine it clear on the end of the path. Yes. But he shined it right in front of us. He shined it and he showed us and he says, okay, this is what I want you to do. This is the revelation. And what we have is not a new revelation of God, it's a very old one. But when we were in our own minds and we had everything there was to have, God couldn't shine the light because the void in the form was our own making. But when we began doing it His way, we walk in the light. We walk in the light. Amen. So the, the law is the mitzvah. It, it, it is the commandment. Uh, 
John 8, 12, whoever has it. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. Okay. The light of life. We, we follow him. We walk in his light. We walk in the light of the commandment, uh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I'm trying to get used to this. This is just a little bit different for me. <laughs> I'm used to pointing and giving you a scripture. Now I don't know where it's going to come from. Fortunately, it's all been the right version, so I understand what you're saying. But faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we're, we're talking, and, and we're discussing this, and we're talking about the, the, the word. We're talking about the light that comes from walking in the word. And they say, well, yeah, but you guys talk about the Messiah. What are you lifting up the word onto a pedestal for? I'm glad I asked that question. John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word. The Word was made flesh. Yes. There's none like you, O Lord. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And he came down and they tried to say that he, he did away with the law and he did away with all. He did away with himself if he did away with what we call the law. He did away himself. He came down and he showed us how to live. When we follow after him, we are walking in his light. When we obey his voice, we are walking in his light. That's the reason why, yeah, I mean, you, you hear about uh, Yeshua is supposed to be revealing himself in these different nations. I don't know. I, I don't know if he's really appearing to people in their dreams. I don't know. All I know is this is much Yeshua as he was when he was walking yes. in the flesh. Amen. Because he is the word of God. And that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Amen. We've got personal decisions that we make from time to time that maybe, Lord, it's not clear in your word, but if you need direction for your life, if you want to know if something is sin or not sin, it's, it's right here. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. It comes down to you either obey or you don't obey. Amen. He's never hidden it from us. It's right there. It's right there. And it takes away our excuse when we stand before him because it's either yay or it's nay. It's, it's really not that difficult because that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. So, uh, Somebody's probably got Psalm, and I don't even know to, need to go get it, do I? Okay, Psalm 40. I'm sorry, I'm starting to pour. I've got to get rid of this thing. Psalm 40, give me verses 5 through 8. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us word. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Amen. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. There is none like thee, O Lord. There is never a law came down and wrapped itself in flesh. There has never been a God that has come down to the midst of the people and to lead the people in understanding. There's never been a God come down and die in the flesh 
for their yes. people, that yes. opened up the understanding, that opened up the way, that made a way for salvation, that made a way for a people that was not his people to be grafted into his people. Yes. There is none like thee, O Lord. Amen. You're not going to find it anywhere else in history because the rest of them are dead stone. The rest of them are dead wood. Amen. But our God is the true yes. and living God. Amen. He is the Word. Amen. 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 Let's go to Hebrews. And we just keep losing that and losing that. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. I'm going to pick this one up because I've, I've got to go backwards here in just a minute. I'm not backsliding though. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. He's a discerner between the thoughts and the intent. We can ignore that. You guys have already got them written down, right? We're good. Kind of? Okay. When Jesus came down and he, he was teaching, they call it the Beatitudes, and we, we've used this as the example because it's one of the most famous examples. And he says, if any man looks on a woman to lust after her, the, the same has already committed adultery with her in his heart. He didn't even commit the act, but because the intent was in his head, it doesn't matter if he struck out with her. The intent was already there. He was already committing adultery yes. because the word discerns between the thought and the intent. We think about King David when he walked out, his army was out there and they were all at battle and he walked out on his rooftop and he looked out and he saw Bathsheba bathing and he said, hubba hubba. If he'd have left it at hubba hubba and turned around and went back inside, the adultery never would have happened. But because he acted on what was in his heart, what was in his mind, he committed the sin. Amen. The word of God tells us it's a sin. Yes. Do not commit adultery. A amen. <laughs> Let's back up a little bit. Fourth chapter. And we're going to pick up in the, the sixth verse. Says, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter in, enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, today after so long a time as it was said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, I've got to go back and correct this. The King James Version translates that Jesus. This is Joshua he's talking about. Not, not Yeshua Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, but Joshua, son of Nun. Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Therefore remaineth, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own words, as God did from his. Joe, give me John, the third chapter. I think I want about the 18th verse. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Keep reading. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. Light is come into the world. Okay, now the Pharisees, the Sadducees, they had 
the light, they had the mitzvah, they had the commandment, but they didn't have any sort of the spirit. What they had in front of them was dead word. It, it was just the law carved in stone. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't do anything with it. So the living word comes down and lives among them, shined the light, told them what the law was about. And this is the condemnation. <clears throat> and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay, so this light is the life of men. This light that shined out of darkness, this light that shined down and showed them the truth of the law and it showed them what was in their hearts. And when God does this, you've got two choices. You repent or you harden your heart. That, that's the only choice you have when you are confronted, when he honestly shines that light into your word. A lot of times people pick the Bible up, they're like, wow, that hurts. Mm -hmm. yes. Everything I do, it's against. But when you get on the inside and you start living what is Amen. in there, yes. you're no longer offended by Amen. the word yes. because you're wanting to be molded. You're yes. wanting to be shaped. Yes. You're wanting to become as he yes. was in this Amen. world. You are wanting those characteristics to become part of your character Amen. because that word was made flesh and showed us how to live. Amen. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Hallelujah. For he that is entered into his rest. Hmm. For he that is entered into his rest hath also ceased from his own works. Interesting scripture. Go to Galatians. And we are going to pick up here in the fifth chapter. And I didn't do that to you just because I had all the scriptures printed out. It's just kind of the direction this is going. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to pick up here in the 16th verse. Because this is just what Paul was saying in Romans, the 8th chapter. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the light. Walk in the light of God's Word. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Now the works of the flesh, what are these? These are the works that we have ceased from when that light shines in our heart. When that light shows you what you truly are on the inside, this is what we cease from. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You come to God in the light of his word and allow that word to be shined in your heart and he takes you from the darkness that is the works of the flesh. Yes. He sets your feet upon the rock and you Amen. start doing something a little different. Amen. You start Amen. walking and you Hallelujah. start bearing fruit. Yes. Because when you're in him, when you are grafted into the good olive tree, you will bear fruit. Yes. Amen. Oh, brother, I spoke in tongues. I danced. And then you live like a demon. Yes. Amen. 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 
<laughs> Wrong spirit. Yeah. But how many times have you seen it? How many times? I'm all for it. I'm like Paul sometimes. I speak in tongues more than ye all. But if you're not bearing fruit, what good is it? Entertainment value? That's what it is. You go in and you get the warm fuzzies and do a little dance and then you go on out the door. You live like a devil in front of the people you work with. Something's wrong. The works of the flesh were never dealt with inside your heart. You've never submitted yourself to the Torah. You've never submitted yourself to the spiritual flashlight going on to the inside. Somebody's got to have 2 Peter 1.19 already. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. It's not always something, a matter of fact, I'd say it's most likely not instantaneous yeah. for most people. You seek after God and you get understanding. Just like Isaiah 28 and 11, he says here a little and there a little. Yeah. It's not something that he dumps out on most people. But that day star will arise. Christ will be formed in your heart and you will begin to walk like him. You will begin to act like him if you let the Spirit lead you. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, Amen. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. I would say against such there is no commandment. Because everything we read in the other breaks a commandment. One of the ten. But if we walk in the Spirit and we bear fruit in the Spirit, and we do things God's way, we're walking in the light as He is the light. Amen. Somebody's got John 10, verses 9 and 10. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am come that they have, might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And I, I really truly don't believe he's talking about quantity. I think he's talking about quality. Amen. There's a misery that comes with living in the flesh. Amen. I'm not just talking about hangovers and all that stuff either. That, that, that's, I, I don't know. I had a screw loose when I was a kid. Maybe that's one of the reasons why God couldn't leave me in West Virginia. But I had a screw loose when I was a kid. If something was coming out of my mouth, chances are it was a lie. And that's one of the first things God dealt with when he filled me with the Holy Ghost as he took that spirit out of me. He took it out of me, but I subjected myself to his light. I subjected myself to his word. The, the things that used to be so prevalent in my life, they didn't even take a back seat. They got left behind. Because we bear fruit when we walk in the spirit. Amen. Um, so he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Amen. Now I'm throwing a tissue. There's a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Kind of what I was saying earlier. We, we have the word of God. It is the way to God. 
But if we try to make up our own path to God without taking the counsel of the Word of God, then we've got a religion and we don't have the truth. There, there's a lot of religions out there and there's a lot of them that will try to take you a different way. But when we walk in the word, when we walk in the light, we come to him and we do it his way. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. The word became flesh. Go ahead, give me Psalm 37. We're just going to close out. Fret. I'm sweating and sweating and we're just going to. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. We're going to end there. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus.